The Odyssey is one of the foundational texts of the Western canon. But it's a classic book, and like most classic books, it can be both intimidating and difficult to understand. But in this video, I'm going to give you a thoughtful, nuanced, and simple analysis. One that will both give you understanding of the text, and also allow you an entry point to go deeper into the Odyssey if you so choose. So let's jump in. If you wanted to understand the Odyssey in three words, those words would be pride, vision, and fortitude. These three words both explain the significance of the Odyssey, while also showing us how the story is a universal story, one that teaches us a formula to overcome life's greatest burdens. And this is definitely a story of burdens. To briefly recap the plot, our protagonist Odysseus is trying to sail home to his family after the Trojan War. This voyage should only take him a few weeks, but in reality, it ultimately takes him 10 years to get back home. Why 10 years? It's because of his pride. So let's break down this first word, pride, and its significance to the story. Pride is significant in literature in general because it's considered the deadliest of the sins. Pride comes before the fall, as the saying goes. What happens is, when Odysseus is first sailing home, he and his men take a detour on this island for supplies. However, they discover that this island is inhabited by man-eating cyclopses. And there's this one cyclops, Polyphemus, who ends up trapping Odysseus and his men inside of this cave, and he proceeds to start eating Odysseus's men. This can continues until Odysseus discerns a plot to blind Polyphemus and then escape the island. And he executes this plan successfully, blinding the Cyclops and escaping back onto his boat. Once he's escaped, however, he has his moment of pride. From the safety of his boat, he turns around and starts taunting Polyphemus. Much in a similar way like how Jack Sparrow always taunted his foes from Pirates of the Caribbean. This is the day you should always remember is the day that you almost... And Odysseus likewise taunts, Hey, you jerk! Always remember that it was I, Odysseus, who blinded you. That's right, Odysseus spelled O D Y. Eh, this was a terrible idea. Because Odysseus was a sore winner and reveals his identity, Polyphemus the Cyclops subsequently prayed to Poseidon, the god of the sea, to curse Odysseus's life, which Poseidon obliges to, and thereby delaying his voyage home for 10 years. If Odysseus had merely kept his mouth shut after escaping the island, he would have been home free. But pride comes before the fall. Ironically, however, it's Odysseus's greatest flaw that ultimately leads to the beauty and the redemption within the story. For the next 10 years, Odysseus is trying to get home while literally fighting against the gods, and his life experience is almost exclusively that of unbearable suffering. And the universal question behind the story becomes, in prolonged periods of unbearable suffering, what is the path to salvation? Odysseus's story suggests that the solution is fortitude and vision. First off, if we recap the lowlights of Odysseus's journey back home, in addition to the Cyclops, he endures the tragedy of losing his entire crew, he is nearly turned into a pig by the goddess Circe, he's forced to battle a six-headed sea monster that also kills six members of his crew, and he encounters the wicked sirens of the sea who try to lure him to his death, and he spends seven years as a slave to the nymph Calypso. And Odysseus is perhaps most famous for overcoming all of this. And we might wonder, what is genuinely special about Odysseus? How did he not merely survive for these 10 years, but rise to each and every harrowing occasion that fortune threw his way. Well, the first distinct factor of Odysseus is his vision. Like Tolkien says, not all those who wander are lost. And though Odysseus wanders much, he's never truly lost. He's a man who knows what he wants, to merely get back home to his family. And the man who knows where he is going and why he is going there is a markedly powerful man. This vision of Odysseus's is relatively simple, as all strong visions are. And thus, we realize that the simplest vision of nobility can be enough to help us withstand the greatest horrors of the world, which is a truly remarkable and life-changing realization. And if it's an idea that you want to explore further, definitely read Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Meanwhile, if it's his vision that keeps Odysseus alive, it's his fortitude that brings him fame. Fortitude comes from the Latin word fortis, meaning strength. And in English, we use the word fortitude in reference to our mind. So Odysseus is famous for his strength of mind. Yes, Odysseus's vision pushes him forward, but we all have dreams and visions and plans. Yet few of us genuinely see our visions through, because life is hard, and its hardness can crush our dreams. But Odysseus's quintessential virtue is his ability to endure long-suffering because of his fortitude. And this is why I think he's arguably a greater hero than his mythologized counterparts like Hercules or Achilles. Odysseus 
Odysseus isn't gifted with any godlike strength. He's merely a man. Odysseus's mere ability to withstand life's storms is a testimony for all young men to admire and emulate. Whether we're talking soldiers on the front lines, husbands at home providing for their families, or even young men seeking to build a sense of character through scholarship or athletics. To be the hero of your life's story, you need a vision to guide you, but you also need the fortitude to stand strong, as suffering is promised in life, regardless of which path you ultimately take. With Odysseus, we don't only see him take a noble path forward, we see him take the best path forward. The world is naturally riveting towards chaos and hell, and the way that young men help set the world right is by following Odysseus's example. The best path forward is to discern a noble vision and pursue that vision with the utmost faith and trust and surrender in its goodness, and to also embrace the transformation of character that comes through the pains and the suffering of said adventure. This is the heroic path, and the heroic path doesn't promise you a happy ending, nor even a happy life, but you are promised the adventure of your lifetime, the opportunity to reach your full potential and help set the world right. And with all of that stated, I'm now going to go ahead and end this video on a weird note by leaving us with a quote from a different book altogether. It's a quote from my favorite novel of all time, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. In the excerpt I want to share, I feel properly captures the ethos and spirit of Odysseus's heroism. So here goes. Life is a storm, my young friend. You will bask in the sunlight one moment, be shattered on the rocks the next. What makes you a man is what you do when that storm comes. You must look into that storm and shout as you did in Rome. Do your worst, for I will do mine. Only then will the fates come to know you as we know you. Take care, guys.